Ghanaians leave home with dreams, with aspirations. They end up here, many of them in this area. They own shops, importers, exporters. Some of them are shop hands in places like this. Today, City Newsroom sets out to find out what are their dreams and aspirations and also speak to business owners on how some of them have turned little ideas into magnificent businesses that are surviving. To begin our task to understand the life of a migrant, our first stop in the Bronx is the shop of Mr. Daniel Mafuahinkra, the owner of Gold Coast Trading Company. After a couple of years, I decided to retire from Wall Street and do the business in full scale. In the year 2000, I decided to join her fully. So I quit, I mean, I retired from Wall Street and we decided to relocate. The business started in Brooklyn, but in 2006, in 2000, we came to the Bronx where we realized that the majority of the Ghanaian population was based. And since then, we have continued until now. The Henkwas shop serves as the go-to place for not just Ghanaians, but other Africans who want a taste of home. For a man who deals in so many perishable goods, he explains the gains in the value chain that have enhanced his business. I would say the Ghanaians have done a lot of good in the canning industry, in generally in food preparation and food processing. You can see some of our products when you step into the store. Uh, most of them come from Ghana and West Africa in general. But Ghana, so far, as I can see, is leading the canning industry. Now, getting the goods from Ghana, like I said, is not a problem because the government is helping. But bringing them here can present a few headaches. The USDA is strict about the food imports from all over the world. And they want, they want to make sure that your food the source of the, of the food itself is hygienic and up to the standard. One is Prince Edwadadu. His opinion is particularly important because he is the longtime president of the Ghana Assorted Foodstuffs Exporters Association. The majority of Ghanaians believe in what the people can do for you, especially the government, but I don't believe like that because I've seen the differences between America and Ghana. You have to go in for yourself, but we sit down for the government to help, which is not helping us. It is informative how these migrant workers from Ghana, who have all traveled with dreams of making lives better for themselves and their families, still have a finger on the pulse of issues in Ghana, like these two cooks. Free education in the double track, and your best reset. Now, relatives and some residents of Takrade today hit the streets in protest against the death of their relatives. Now, they want government to dismiss, among others, the interior minister as well as the CID boss. Uh, Takrade regional correspondent was at that demonstration and has more. With the release of the police forensic test into the Takrade kidnap girls, the expectation was that the issue of the kidnap girls will actually come to an end. But for these demonstrators here on the street of Sekani Takrade today, the issue is not over since they do not believe in the reports by the police and also are calling for the heads of some police couples who actually compromise the investigation up to date. I have the spokesperson of the Tech Party Kidnap Girls, Makia Hefer Grant, to tell me why they are participating in this uh, demonstration. This demonstration is being organized by Western Youth for Justice, Imagine Tech Party, and then the four families of these kidnapped girls. And then 
We are demanding to, for uh, Interior Minister to step down, National Security Minister to step down, the CID boss, Madam Tiwa, to step down, so that you and I can be safe in our own country. Why is the government, led by the Commander-in-Chief of Ghana Armed Forces, Nana Adodankwa Akufuadu, shielding, shielding and covering up for CID boss, yeah. Madam yeah. Tiwa and Brian Champon? Who, are, who out of their own conviction claimed to know where the girls were and had since not reunited to their families, as they said, but have declared them dead? Why have you, Mr. President, yeah. completely refused yeah. to invite yeah. or visit the affected families mm -hmm. of the four kidnapped Takpade girls yeah. since the yeah. news of their kidnap broke and became a national issue? Yes. Yeah. The Deputy Western Regional Minister, Gifty Kusi, who received the petition, only promised to forward it to the President. Now, the Minister for Roads and Highways, Kusi Amakwata, has given the Upper West Regional Directorate of the Ghana Highways Authority a two-day ultimatum to fix the portion of the Watumu Bolga Road in the Sisala East Municipality, which has been washed off by a downpour. The Minister gave the directive after visiting the area to assess the extent of damage on the road that has left several motorists and commuters stranded for days. This is the extent of damage caused by the downpour that hit Tumu and its environs last Thursday. The collapse of this major bridge that links the Upper West and Upper East regions have inconvenienced over 2,000 commuters and motorists who are unable to reach their destinations for nearly a week. Basic school teachers in this area and mostly first-year senior high school students who are traveling to school are unable to reach their destinations. The minister, after inspecting the road and interacting with the stranded passengers, expressed outrage at the extent of damage and ordered the Ghana Highways Authority to work day and night to fix it. I want to assure the people of these two regions, Upper West Region and Upper East Region, that the government of His Excellency President Kufuado attaches great importance to our road sector and whatever happens, even if it's by an act of God, you know, as uh, uh, this particular problem is, with all the resources available to us, you know, both human and uh, material resources, monetary resources, wherever we have to uh, uh, mobilize these resources. We are going to do that because this is an emergency situation. 